Prince Charming. When we hear that name, we usually think of Cinderella or Snow White, or a term used for an ideal man that we want or have even found. It certainly echoes in Snow White's song, Someday My Prince Will Come, but in Once Upon a Time, did he show up? Well, if you've seen Snow White's profile, then you already know the answer, but what about his side of the story? Well, first off, he wasn't even born into royalty. He was born with the name David to Ruth and Robert on a farm, along with his twin brother James. Unfortunately, they both fall sick, but the parents can't afford proper medication. So they ask for help from Rumpelstiltskin, but of course, there's always a deal with him. He explains that a King George and his Queen cannot conceive an heir, and so he will take one of the twin boys. After much argument and refusal, Rumpelstiltskin tosses a coin, and James is the one to be raised as a prince, and David is left on the farm. Because of this, David's father has resorted to drinking. He promises to change and leaves for a two-week trip to gather some supplies. However, he is secretly on a mission to get James back and finds out that he's at Pleasure Island. Yes, that Pleasure Island. Robert even comes across Pinocchio who tries to help him escape, but George still takes James away and Robert dies on his way in home. Years go by after the news of his father's death, David becomes the man of the house and takes care of the farm, but they are being threatened by Bo Peep, demanding money. One day, a woman travelling comes across their situation and tries to help out. We, the audience, know that this is actually Anna from Arendelle, but she calls herself Joan to hide her identity. She witnesses Bo Peep demanding payment or she'll take the farm, and thus Anna teaches David how to sword fight. He finally stands up to Bo and decides that from that day on, he means to make most of his life and not dwell so much on the past. To emphasise this, he gives Anna his father's horse to slowly let go of his grief. Trying to find ways to improve him and his mother's life, he takes a journey with his dog, Walby. He comes across a merchant who manages to drug David to use his dog for tracking. When he wakes up, he finds Walby and he leads him to a cart where a woman is kept prisoner. The merchant sneaks up behind him, but David manages to stab him. Him and the woman inside the cart end up having a conversation, despite not actually seeing each other. He tells her he might need to sell his farm, in which the woman offers money to thank him for saving her. He hands her the key to escape, and she hands him a bag of money. Not knowing this, the woman inside is Snow White, and their first touch of hands creates a first spark of true love. Time goes by, and James grows up to be quite reckless that he ends up getting killed, leaving King George wanting David to take his place. Rumpelstiltskin tells this news to David, and that he must slay a dragon for King Midas, and in return he will give riches to his mother. David agrees and successfully kills the dragon under his brother's name, and King Midas offers his daughter Abigail's hand in marriage. George threatens David to agree, otherwise his mother will be put in danger, and so he has no option. He returns home to say goodbye to his mother, where she hands him her wedding ring. David and Abigail one day take a carriage ride, which is ambushed by Snow White, and she steals a bag of jewellery, including David's mother's ring. He tries to trap her, which he does, and convinces her to give back the ring, otherwise he would turn her into the evil queen who is hunting her down. They succeed getting the ring back from some trolls, and the two secretly admit that there's a spark between them, but say goodbye. He realises that he has fallen for Snow White, and confesses to King George, but he still threatens him that he will burn his old home if he doesn't marry Abigail. So David writes a letter to Snow White, asking her to see him. He aims to run away with her, but she tells him that she doesn't love him, leaving him heartbroken. David, still refusing to marry someone he doesn't love, runs away, but is caught by Abigail herself. She confesses that she doesn't want this marriage to happen either, and shows him a golden statue of a man. Her father, King Midas, had a curse turning things to gold, including her true love. She believes there's a lake, Nostos, that can restore something lost, but also believes it is too dangerous. David, learning about his fiancée's misery, decides to venture to this lake to restore her partner. Abigail was right about the danger, as a siren guards the lake and shapeshifts into the thing a person wants most, and in David's case, Snow White. He keeps telling himself it's nothing but an illusion, but the siren tries to drown him. 
He manages to kill her and bring the water to Abigail, which brings her partner back to life. Finally reunited, they encourage David to find Snow White. He finds Red Riding Hood, who knows Snow, and tells him that she was aiming to see him to run away with like he planned. He figures that George had something to do with her repelling him. He finally does find Snow White and realises she used a memory potion to forget him. Not only that, but she isn't herself and aims to kill the evil queen. He tries True Love's kiss, but it doesn't work and Snow runs off. When she fires an arrow to kill the queen, David takes the hit for himself. He tells her that he would rather die than see her go down the path of her stepmother. She is amazed he would sacrifice himself for her, that she kisses him and the potion wears off. However, George's guards capture him and is sentenced to death by his adopted father. On the day of the execution, it's interrupted by the evil queen. She agrees to keep him prisoner and she'll give George the gold he wanted from King Midas, hence the arranged marriage. In the cell, David is visited by the evil queen who tells him she wanted him to get to Snow White, in which she shows him a poisoned apple that will make Snow White fall into a sleeping curse. Left alone, the huntsman helps him escape the castle, but the queen finds out and traps him in an infinite forest. Struggling to get out, David is confronted by Rumpelstiltskin, who says he can enchant his ring to help find Snow White, but after he does something for him. He gives him a vial of true love and asks him to hide it in a body of a beast. David finds a castle in which belongs to Maleficent, who turns into a dragon. He manages to stick the vial in a flap behind her ear and claims his end of the deal, the enchanted ring. With it, he finds Snow White in a glass coffin and gives her true love's kiss that wakes her up and he proposes to her. She agrees and they both decide to defeat the evil queen and take back Snow White's throne and thus war has begun. But it's not just the evil queen they have to worry about, it's also King George. David and Snow try to hide at his old home with his mother, but Ruth gets shot with a poisoned arrow. He believes going back to Lake Nostos could cure her, but because he had killed the siren, the lake has dried up and thus he has no choice but to say goodbye to his mother. He shows Snow White his mother's necklace that can predict the gender of a person's future baby. In their case, it's going to be a girl. Now, from here after, I've pretty much gone over it in my Snow White profile, so if you want um, to know more, then there's that video. I wanted to specifically look at David's side of the story and how he became Prince Charming. There's a quote he and Snow White always says, that no matter what, they will always find each other. Would they be able to do that in Storybrooke? When they forget who they are? Well, as Snow White says herself, someday my prince will come.